Hey, thanks for attending Solid Edge University. We've got a few more people just coming in. We'll take just a few more minutes and uh, we'll get started uh, just a little after one. Thanks for your patience. All right, we're gonna get started in just a few more minutes. Uh, people are still coming in. Hopefully you can see our screen and we'll, uh, we'll get started in just a few. Hello, welcome to Solid Edge University 2021. Uh, we are Maya HTT. We provide software driven engineering solutions. As a matter of fact, we've been awarded the number one worldwide partner for Siemens this year. We're a collection of passionate engineers. About 75% of our staff are scientists and engineers. And although we started in space, we we're recognized worldwide for our multi physics simulations. Our engineers have sought after hands on experience in almost every industry. Actually, from satellites to tomatoes, we do it all. We've developed over 30 software modules for Siemens and now have millions of users around the world. We help our clients put satellites into space, reduce energy consumption of data centers, design zero emission vehicles, deliver tomatoes to customers and find better ways of doing engineering. Today, we'll take a look at Solid Edge technical publications, uh, both an overview and uh, what's new in Solid Edge 2021. The general idea here is that you can reuse your Solid Edge data for very quick creation of documentation. There's very few errors because what you're bringing in is the actual Solid Edge uh, geometry and materials, the, the tree, uh, the, the properties or metadata, display configs, exploded views, model views, PMI, bring all of this in uh, directly into the tech pub environment. There's two separate products. One is called Solid Edge Illustrations and the other one is Solid Edge 3D Publishing. The biggest difference between these two is that the illustrations are a single document um, that is single page at a time. Whereas the 3D publishing is very rich documents, multiple pages, multiple models um, in on the same document. And they can be interchangeable. So you can actually change, bring in the, the, um, the data from an illustration into publishing and vice versa. Uh, so when you're in Solid Edge, there is a single button uh, under the um, environments or 
tools drop down uh, where you can just pick a button and that will bring the model into a uh, technical pub application. Here's a quick look at the interface. It's uh, DPI aware, meaning super high resolution monitors, um, the or even low res monitors, the icons uh, still look uh, sharp and crisp. And there's, when you go to file new, there's a ton of um, wizard and templates available and it has the same backdrop that uh, Solid Edge uses. So it looks very familiar. Uh, some of the something that's relatively new is the ability to get the section views in SETP. If you see this acronym, that's Solid Edge Technical Publications, um, and these section views are created automatically uh, in there in when you when you bring the model in from Solid Edge. Uh, there's a couple different ways to import these. You can do the Illustrate Show and show the storyboard. Um, and the, the PMI model views also come in. Uh, PMI, meaning that, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. If you have right in here, if you were to have some section views um, described or saved in your solid edge models, those come across into uh, technical publications. Um, however, if you don't have any model views uh, and you don't have any section views, you can still create those once you're in tech pubs. So no worries there. Um, another thing, uh, we do support display configurations. I'll mention that a few more times. But um, if you don't have display configs, you can uh, control your control and create selection sets. And this makes it a lot easier to navigate through your uh, through your session by the ability to turn items on and off very quickly by creating selection sets. And but by deleting these and moving them around, that does not disturb the original uh, model tree from, from your model. To create these selection sets, you edit, first I'll edit an illustration, you select the parts you want um, in that selection set, then you right button on the model with those selected, and then you can create the selection set from there. If you click in space somewhere else and you right button in space, that will gray out the selection set command. Um, you can do selected, uh, select some illustrations as well. This is interesting here where you can select uh, some illustrations and actually perform like a batch um, application to them. So you can select a number of different illustrations and you can hide uh, a number of selected parts on many illustrations or you can set the a transition on many of them at once um, and change your illustration size. It's just a way to affect many illustrations versus just one. There are some storyboard panel commands. These are some new commands to write down at the storyboard so you don't have to go hunting around for icons and this gives you the opportunity to quickly select all the illustrations or do an invert. So if anything's selected, you can reverse that and select everything else or clear it to uh, select none of them. And you, and you don't need to move the mouse around very much for that. Uh, there is something fairly new. This is an add-on. It's called the uh, XLIFT language translation. So if your tech pubs are all done in one language and you want to translate those to another without having to redo them, there is a utility available for that. Uh, when you publish uh, PDF, you can publish in PDF, 3D PDF, or HTML5. There's a number of different uh, file formats that we can publish in, but when you do PDF specifically, there is an option for uh, vector graphics in here. And this is super crisp. When you have fine lines in there, as you zoom in, they still say, uh, they still look really tight versus raster graphics. Uh, you can adjust your illustration sizes. This is pretty nice to employ some consistency uh, throughout your illustrations from sheet to sheet to sheet. So there's a, a simple tool to do that. Uh, there's also some guides here, some illustration guides. These are some background guides, again, to allow you to see before you publish, to see what is gonna show up in your published uh, document. So you get this this outline here in the back that shows you just what's going to be on your document. There's also publish individual sizes. This is kind of a preview to let you see if any images are cropped 
or will be cropped prior to uh, publishing your output. Uh, you can have transparent backgrounds. This is in illustrations, but you can actually uh, have just the outline of your model um, in your image versus whatever your background color. It just removes the background color and it allows you to put these uh, graphics into uh, any other forms of documents and it's a, a nice clean image of, of just your model. Uh, these are now specific to what is new in Solid Edge 2021. Uh, for one thing, they've, we, we've changed the method in which we get the Solid Edge models into tech pubs. In the past, it's a little technical, a little geeky, but we used an API to, to grind the Solid Edge models into the QSM file. Now we do it via the PLM XML uh, pipeline, and that carries a lot more information with it, like the exploded views and some... Um, occurrence properties from your assemblies or the uh, additional properties or you know metadata that kind of thing uh, but what this boils down to is just simply faster so the the blue was previous versions of technical pubs and the orange is just illustrating that file sizes of some of these are pretty big assemblies uh, come in much much faster into um, into tech pubs from Solid Edge, both from a direct import or from um, uh, file open. There are some, uh, for instance, changing pages from from one um, one page to the next in your storyboard. This is just much much faster. That's what these next couple slides illustrate here, and uh, large parts, especially when there are rows and rows of uh, bill of material and metadata fields. Those are much faster than they were. There's team center integration. You can open, say, open and save and check in, check out, get the latest version of your projects to and from team center. You can do additional activities uh, in team center. Uh, you can import and update the solid edge models because they still talk to tech pubs via team center to update all of the models um, to the live CAD model or the released CAD model. You can drag and drop your published output uh, to Team Center so other people can look at it uh, without having to uh, download some other viewers. Uh, there's a carousel object, and this is pretty interesting. Um, you can actually use this carousel to, uh, on, on the side of your publications, to walk users through. Uh, the steps. There's an arrow button. You can always do next, 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 but you can actually do a, a graphic carousel to, to walk them through. There's a 360 degree publishing capability. So you can uh, select your object and, and that does a 360 degree rotation while it's capturing images um, along the way. And that's in illustration only. And there is uh, the SVG, that's a single vector graphics capability where you can click the, um, the bill of material and it uh, highlights the particular parts um, on your screen. Markups can be resized. This is an illustration editing upgrade. Uh, just by right-clicking the markup and selecting properties, you can resize those. You can actually resize illustrations themselves too. So you can right click from an illustration um, on the storyboard and go to the illustration properties. You can do this on just one of them or you can do multiple. You can do multiple, select illustrations, change the illustration size and affect many. Uh, there's a look at face tool. This is fairly cool. You can actually select a item in an illustration then right button on there, hit align to face, and it changes the illustration to align to the selected uh, item's face. There are um, the ability to duplicate your illustrations. You can right click on any illustration that is your storyboard and just hit duplicate illustration. If that illustration contains markups, those are, those are duplicated as well. Uh, you can, uh, finally we have a sort in the Parts list. Some of these parts lists can be pretty involved, depending on how much metadata you have in your uh, models when they come across. But the ability to sort them 
is a, a nice feature. And there's the storyboards that build up at the bottom of your screen throughout each of the processes. You can actually uh, move those vertically now and, and rip through those and walk through your process. A little bit easier to read depending on the size and shape of your monitor or monitors. Uh, there's now JT support and JT is another file format if you're not familiar with it already, similar to STEP and uh, Parasolid, but this is a very lightweight, it's a small file type, but it, it holds a geometry, the uh, assembly hierarchy, uh, materials, metadata. It's a, it's a nice file format that is supported. Uh, there's a, a, a little bit of a change here in the parts list. You can create these parts lists and they now can be placed right over an image with some translucency to look through them. That's a, a minor change, but it can tighten up the uh, your layout of graphics a little bit better. Uh, so now let's take a quick look at the tool in action. So we'll start here in Solid Edge where we can either hit the button up here in the tools drop down to go directly into uh, the technical pubs application, or we can export a file that we can open up in the, up in the application uh, directly. <clears throat> so we'll start here. And once we're in here, we'll create a, uh, well, first of all, we'll, we'll select a template. This template is just a work instruction template that is a predefined template and you can create your own. We'll call this uh, motor removal and we can position the image the way we like it, make it fit just right. And we can give um, an overview of what we're gonna be working on. First of all, we should uh, describe a safety check, make sure that we power down the unit, uh, make sure it's unplugged. You can just create uh, illustration number one and select uh, a sticker or an icon that um, indicates to power this down. So we'll name this thing power off unit, and then we can go grab an image from the library and you can actually use your own images as well. Get that in position, get just right. Great. So let's do a second step here. We'll do another illustration, uh, something about, you know, we'll say remove the back cover. And because it's a 3D object in here, directly from Solid Edge, we can flip this around to the other side, create another illustration, turn on the grid, so we can place our, uh, our arrow the way we like it, drop an arrow down there, and then uh, edit the arrow to point the other direction. Great, we have our two, our first two steps. And uh, to make it easier to navigate, you can see those, by the way, down there in our storyboard, but to make it easier to navigate through this for a user, we can insert a little table and this table, we can have uh, the first step and the second step that we just defined a second ago. Um, and we can change the font, make it a little bit bigger and easier to look at and um, go through our step one and our step two. Excellent. All right, now the next part of our template included a, um, a table of contents and we're not gonna use the table of contents right now. Uh, it is there when we need it later if this document got much larger, but let's move on to uh, the next step. And this next series, this is when we're gonna define how to remove the motor, the steps that are necessary. So we can do this with a series of exploded views. And as we touch each of the objects, it does access the, um, the XYZ coordinates or the UCS that was in those parts when they were uh, modeled in Solid Edge. We can select those and move, do a manual explode um, one step at a time. So we'll do this in the order that we want this to be worked on. So grab this here, here's step number one. We can fit it so it fits in the screen. So we can zoom in and see the fan. We can do step number two, bring the belt out. 
the connectors, some of the washers. We'll make a selection set out of those, make it easier. Here we go, a selection set of all three of those at once instead of one at a time. And then lastly, we'll pull the motor out. <clears throat> now, once we have each of those, we can run a wizard. And the wizard is cool because this can take each of the exploded steps that we did and create a separate illustration for each of them. And this just makes things a lot easier because you can reverse these steps if you need to, and you can individually uh, position these and fit them and such and control their transition uh, and, and that kind of thing. So we'll get each of these steps here defined. Um, we can actually walk through here. You can see these steps, step one, step two, and it honors the zoom uh, perspective and put those through there. Now we can uh, define each of the steps there in our storyboard and we can name those. We can give them some text, textual um, information. And this text that we're typing in there is in English right now, but as I mentioned at the beginning of this session, there is a tool to scoop up all of those uh, English language and translate those to another language if need be. Story bar. All right, so we got that taken apart. We can then access, or next we can access the uh, the parts list or the bill of materials. You can access the bill of materials for the entire project anytime we want. Uh, but you can also just illustrate the ones that are in a given selection set. So we don't need to cloud the whole image with uh, the entire uh, bill of material. We can just do the ones that uh, are relevant. So we'll drop these down in here. And we can see our three parts. And this is nice to have. We can put that, uh, that bill right in the image. And as you click the items in the bill, they also click on the screen. Now we can also scoop up the, uh, make a carousel, uh, a graphics button. Instead of a next, next, next button by itself, you can illustrate graphically what each step is and that acts as a button. So as we click those buttons, you can see here, it drives through each of the uh, sequential steps that we need to remove the motor. Um, lastly, what we can do is <clears throat> uh, do bring in just a subassembly. And this subassembly here is the motor assembly. And in this motor assembly, we can utilize uh, one of the exploded views. We did a manual explode just a second ago. Here we can do uh, an explode. We can grab an explode config that was embedded in the model back in Solid Edge. And what's nice about this is if the exploded view changes for whatever reason in Solid Edge, it would be reflected here. So we'll grab our two illustrations. One is the collapsed view. The other is the exploded view. And we can create our, um, there it is right there. We can fit this just right. We can tone down the parts list to only include the parts showing on the screen there in this illustration. Grab this, we can change the header, the font. We'll grab just the display config associated with the motor that's showing on the screen. You can actually control what's in this parts list too. So if we go edit the parts list, we can add, let's say, the, the vendor, um, the material, uh, the author, uh, anything we want in that parts list. So let's take a look. We'll edit the parts list. And as you see the fields here, there are a ton of metadata fields that come across from Solid Edge. And um, those can be adjusted to fit. You can do it here in the preview window. Uh, or I think what I like to do is just leave this alone, 
let it land on the page and then tweak it once you get it on the page. That way you know just what you're gonna get when you publish. So we'll make a quick adjustment here. And um, now we'll add a couple buttons so that we can show this item uh, collapsed and exploded. Like we did before at the very beginning. So we'll grab a uh, component here and we'll edit in, uh, this is collapsed. And we'll type that in. Go add the tip and call this collapsed. All right. And change the action here. Illustration change, very good. All right. So once we have that done, let's copy and paste that. Make the font a little bit bigger to see, good enough. All right, paste it in here. And we'll just edit this to be the exploded view. All right, good enough. Explode. And there we go. Great. Select it. So now we can toggle to uh, between the two and show it collapsed and exploded. And um, lastly, if something were to update in the model, once this is all done, we can browse out to the model or here we have an exported uh, QSD, uh, QSM file that we um, want to access that shows, watch the bracket here. So we're gonna switch to rev B of that bracket and it goes back to solid edge, checks out the change. Now that change is reflected in here and we don't have to redo, because each of these are connected to their respective parts. So we have that complete. And um, we have another, this, this entire parts list came with our template that we did originally. We don't necessarily need this right now. Here is our all of our pages. We can select any one of the pages. We can delete it or copy and paste it. Some additional notes here. And we can now cycle through the whole process. Uh, from beginning to end, and it's now time to publish. So we're gonna publish an HTML5 file, and um, we can take it from there. Here we are, we're in the HTML5 file. Uh, this is just a web browser. Uh, you can toggle through the switches that way. You can also export this as PDF, a 3D PDF, so no plugins required. Go through the different steps. Step one, step two, step three. You can pan and zoom and rotate in these views. I'll show you a little bit more of that in just a moment. And there we have it. The round trip, oh, the exploded view, and then collapsed. And just a little more of that document in here where we have the remove the back cover and this. I, I did just want to make sure you, I illustrated that, that this is a live, um, a live 3D image, live 3D view. And um, as you work through each of the steps on here and you're not sure of one of the steps, uh, you do get the opportunity to be able to do a, a better, you know, a closer interrogation and in just how um, how that, that item is coming out of there uh, and to be able to go backwards and forward in um, a little bit more detail than you could uh, in a YouTube video if you're trying to learn how to fix your gas grill or a car or motorcycle or whatever. Um, and, um, and these components here are, are as you select them, they highlight on the screen and they match up with the bill of material. Just thought I'd point that out and uh, that's about it.
Hello, welcome to. Quick poll here. We'll do a poll, got a couple uh, questions. Let's see if we can get those started. And uh, we'll have the first one is uh, what version of Solid Edge is. Uh, Oh, actually, any one of these. We'll do one of those about the. Yeah, the first one is a solid edge question. Yep. All right, we'll do the solid edge question there. Let's get that a second. Started. Yeah, and then we'll, it's all started. So oh, okay. People are answering, and we'll close it in a moment and show the results to everyone. <clears throat> That's probably enough time. Oh, a couple more come in. Share. It's interesting. And another quick one. Take these. And maybe a little out of order, but that's okay. I'll close this. Data management is up next, so the poll is still valid. And I'll close that and uh, share. So it's great if you just came for the tech pubs. And We'll just do one more um, short one. And if you have questions, you should find a place to enter those questions in your software. And um, at the end of the session, we'll look through them. And um, looks like there's some coming in already. Well, they'll definitely be there for us at the end. Wow. All right, today we're going to take a look at Team Center integration and Solid Edge built in data management uh, and show you how you can effectively manage your design data through the entire product life cycle. I'm the presenter, Jason Titcomb, and this is today's agenda. First, we'll take a look at Concept Workspace. Concept Workspace. The Team Center integration for Solid Edge tightly integrates Solid Edge data and processes with the collaborative product development environments of both Team Center and Team Center Rapid Start. Through the integration, Solid Edge customers can benefit from a wide access uh, by all users to a single source of product data, sometimes referred to as the single point of truth. Another benefit is manage design reviews with external users such as suppliers or customers improving collaboration with all these key components um, that represent your value chain as they say so now we'll take a look at the concept workspace it's a great uh, set of tools that allow you to rapidly create concepts of your designs. Uh, it improves data reuse and can greatly reduce cost and time. Uh, you'll see in the video that I'm going to narrate over 
um, that you can create a concept workspace very easily, populate it with your designs, uh, make modifications to it, do validation, and then finally publish it to your team center environment. I'm going to narrate over this video demonstrating team center concept workspace. So far, this is just standard solid edge functionality. We'd like to experiment with some other designs. So you can create a new concept workspace and give it a name. This gives you a like a playground or a sandbox, you might say. You can add uh, models to the workspace and then go ahead and use your solid edge tools to make modifications to it. Uh, in this case, we're just removing some screws and making a modification to this part. Uh, we'll uh, maybe get rid of some chamfers, all just standard solid edge functionality, adding a slot here, just to give you an example of uh, some different design ideas that you may want to experiment with before committing to um, saving it into your uh, team center directly. So we'll go ahead and create a second uh, workspace. So you hey, may have another idea and you push that into the second uh, workspace. And uh, we'll go ahead and complete the design, add some, some different holding methods instead of the screws that were there before add some little parts in again standard solid edge assembly really nothing new here um, and just make a pattern of those and that's all pretty straightforward um, solid edge assembly and we'll go ahead and close that so now uh, you can go back and forth between the two. Uh, we're going back to the original uh, concept and adding some components in there. So very easily switch back and forth between uh, concept designs using the concept workspace. And again, just uh, a little patterning to fill out the design. And we'll save it. And Concept Assistant uh, gives you a nice way to um, look at and compare uh, the different designs. So you could have team meetings and discuss your different concepts uh, until you decide which one is the one that you'll go forward with and commit to your Team Center database. And um, at that point, um, so let's see, we're, we're able to make revisions, and um, at some point you can publish this into your uh, Team Center database and commit to that design, and then it can go on and have its own uh, life cycle there. And we're just going to push those files into the database. So there you have it, a little example of concept workspace within Solid Edge and Team Center. Next up is Shape Search. This is amazing technology. Uh, geometry or shape-based search using Siemens Geolis technology. It finds similar parts in the database based on their geometry. Uh, just a couple of clicks away, really easy to use, allows you to uh, reuse parts from your active workspace window, uh, just find them, drag them in. Uh, it avoids all the duplication of creating parts that are almost exactly the same or possibly exactly the same. And um, uh, you'll also be able to compare and uh, reuse that uh, using the uh, active workspace to SE workflow. First, we'll look at how Shape Search works within Solid Edge 2021, leveraging the Team Center Active Workspace. Very easily filter and find files based on geometry, more identical, only similar. Once you find your results, 
Uh, it's very easy to browse uh, and then consume them by a simple drag and drop as you'd be comfortable with. And then from there, it's standard solid edge assembly techniques to place that file. Now with an unmanaged file, you have the same capabilities. Let's say we need a, another button uh, for this area. You begin by maybe modeling one up in the shape that you would like uh, to have and it's easily accomplished with solid edge synchronous technology. That's a really great application for that, I believe. And then it's a simple matter of launching the unmanaged uh, shape search to find other files within your company uh, that may be similar so you don't actually reinvent the wheel. The interface is a little bit different, but the capabilities are very similar. You have an easy to use slider where you can find uh, the best match if there is one for um, a component to save you the time of modeling that other component or and the annoyance of maybe reinventing the wheel and at the point when you finally decided it's a simple open in solid edge and then it's business as usual to place that component um, if you wanted to, you could do a, a geometry compare uh, also with the uh, built-in tool compare models. You would just simply browse and compare the two designs. Once you've selected them both, it's very easy to discover um, the options, very easy to use, just ticking check boxes to show um, the removed volume or the differences in the volume. You can very easily change the colors uh, to be very confident that this is the best component uh, for your design. And then at that point, you're good to go. Team Center integration for Save As Translated. Just improving the already tight integration with Solid Edge and Team Center uh, by making it a little bit easier for you to create your translated files into a foreign file type and output them directly into Team Center. It's really just a couple of clicks now instead of a little more steppy process that it used to be. You can automate creation of DXF, DWG, PDF, whatever. Um, Benefits uh, filtering on solid edge documents to be translated, customization of the translation, and uh, always ensuring that the data is up to date and reducing manual errors. Nice little improvement for Team Center and saving foreign file types using the save as translated. Uh, into your managed environment, simply selecting the type of document that's supported in the configuration of your system and choosing save. You see now it shows up in your, uh, in this case, it's your rich client application. Uh, the data sets are there uh, listed. Nice little improvement for Team Center and saving foreign file types using the Save As Translated uh, into your managed environment, simply selecting the type of document that's supported in the configuration of your system and choosing Save. You see now, and being able to extract translated files from Team Center to possibly uh, be handed off to an outside supplier uh, is much easier now. Extraction can be performed uh, within a solid edge, edge session, which I'll uh, demonstrate uh, by selecting in the graphic window. There are a number of filters, as you see, um, for the, the file types uh, of interest. 
and files are extracted to a specified folder location. Actually, very simple dialog, very easy to use. And we'll do a little demonstration of that. This is an example of how easy it is to now extract translated data from your managed files. You can do it graphically or through a file menu, simply, in this case, we're simply selecting uh, the files that we want to extract. Uh, you can easily just filter what you want and then choose the types that you'd like to be, uh, like to extract to. Very simple user interface. You, of course, specify a location, an unmanaged location, will it be extracted to, and there they are. And a little tidbit related to standardization, the ability to save an existing item to a new item type. This is probably kind of a big deal to some people. Uh, it's a great uh, way to better reuse your data, uh, reduces the number of steps, uh, it's quick, um, easy adoption for new standards. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, item, item is kind of like your main part number. Uh, so you have also control over draft documents and so forth. Okay, we're going to shift gears a little bit to Solid Edge 2021 data management or built in data management. Sometimes it's referred to as. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about Shape Search, even though we covered it already. The open as command, which seems uh, simple enough, but it's very cool in pack and go enhancements. So, first up, Shape Search. You can see there's a, as you saw in the demonstration, it's a simple button. Um, there are some options being specify your Geolist server and the rest, I believe, was covered um, in the demonstration. Very uh, simple install for that. Big cost savings, potentially, if uh, you find yourself reinventing the wheel. Uh, so some more details. This is just the indexing client, kind of an FYI. Uh, the shape search indexer, how it's configured, um, really just some some details for reference. And the open as command, I like this. This is one of my favorites. Uh, doesn't seem like a big deal, but within the Windows uh, File Explorer context menu, there's an open as dot dot dot, and it really just gives you the richness of the full file open dialog that you would normally get if you started from within uh, Solid Edge. So it's a, available in a few places. Um, it essentially redirects you to uh, that rich open dialog where you can then do um, maybe apply a different display configuration for assemblies or use different load options. I think that's where it's really useful i like that that you can right click on a on a large assembly but use the open as will allow you to select a very specific display configuration and uh, so that's a, a really nice enhancement and also in the revisions uh, dialog which you may not be familiar with if you're not using revisions. We'll show you a little of this in the upcoming demonstrations, but uh, just a nice little addition, adding the open. Um, so you can open a previous re revision and check it out. And then uh, work has been done on pack and go uh, as well. Uh, drawings outside the assembly folder structure will also be included. And now we'll take a look at a couple of demonstrations. Let's take a look at setting up Solid Edge built-in data management. 
Uh, as you can see, I launched Solid Edge uh, for the first time after installing. And if I see Team Center here, maybe that's not what I want. And I'd like to use the built in data management. So I'm going to close Solid Edge. And we're going to go to the Solid Edge 2021 and choose the PDM integration. So we're going to use Solid Edge with file management. And all you have to do is hit the exit. And now when I start Solid Edge, we should see a little difference, but there's another step. So here we have just a, an empty application. We're going to go to the options and go to manage. And the minimum is to use Solid Edge data management. And we have a number of tabs. The vault definition is the root of where you would like to store your Solid Edge files. Custom properties are obviously properties within the files that you'd like to search on and so forth. There are some settings for naming rules and lifecycle. We'll talk about all of that. First, let's define the vault definition. So this is my local copy of a demonstration set. And that text file right there actually stores just that. And um, there's nothing in it but really a description and that one line. So that could be put on a central server to make sure everyone is using the same vault location. Easy. Uh, these are Windows user accounts of special users that would have the ability to um, obsolete documents. The help is pretty good on this. Uh, you can control this via the SE admin utility so that people can't just put their own name in there. And the option to automatically revise or copy drawings, uh, that it, you would pretty much always want that. So in, it's basically going to pick up your um, your drawings for you by using the fast search and where used. Um, the distributed file access, I'll show you that in a second. It's really, really simple, but really nice if you're using a cloud service to replicate files onto different users' computers. Custom properties. Um, I'm going to say just get that information. This is just a way for it to glean the properties that you'd like to have indexed. I like this MFG type, um, so that's good. So we'll say set custom properties, and uh, let's move on, and then we'll come back and click this rebuild index, and I'll show you what that is. So the document naming rule. Um, Let's see, what should that be? So this should be, and then we'll probably start this with eight. So this is a prefix that will be automatically prepend, uh, prepended to the file name. And this is the uh, starting document number, this little text file is nothing more than a text file that has a number in it. And we'll probably turn this on. Uh, the underbar A looks, a looks like a good revision, very common, underbar A, underbar B. You could use the excluded characters if you want. And um, if you want to have your documents display a little differently in assemblies, you can use the edit formula and this drop list. And I'm going to use um, what is there right now. That looks pretty good. Uh, life cycle. So the, if you're familiar with Insight, uh, which is an older data management system, this is very much like it. Um, we have a pre-released and we have a released. And again, this can be. Um, 
set up with your solid edge administrator utility and we won't worry about the standard parts uh, we do want it so if we use design manager and um, we we change um, the status to obsolete then it will actually move the files to the obsolete location uh, by default the uh, released that will happen if when you change the status to re released it actually moves the files to that released uh, folder and if you want to automatically obsolete you could turn that on i'm not going to bother uh, to turn that on and this again is automatically matching the drawing to the model um, and there are some workflow settings that we could possibly go through in a later video um, but this is the minimum that we need to do and then we'll choose rebuild index so that will just take a moment to rebuild and if i hit ok if you want to see the status of that just tap your windows button and search for index and choose indexing options and um you can see that it's happening right now it takes with a fresh installation depends on the the computer but it just takes a moment for it to crawl through those files and um, add the search capability to the built-in um, Windows search database. And because I searched on, uh, I added the MFG type, uh, we should be able to search on that as well as other things. So indexing complete, files and files. And this is very similar to what you would do on a server if you had your files um, uh, located on a centralized server. So now let's see if it works. We'll go ahead and choose new. I'll do an ANSI par. And after I make my par, just make a little block so it looks like I did something. I'll just go ahead and save. We should be prompted. Uh, with the new document uh, properties dialog box. So you can see the default location is pre-released, which would make sense for all new new files. Um, we can turn on um, other columns if we want to. And if we choose assign all we should be getting that that 8000 the validate checks to see if another file of that type already exists and then i can just follow through uh, with my save so so let's see let's see if i if i close this and make another new file and uh i'll go ahead and save it uh, the default location uh, is good, and um, we do assign all, and it turns to 8001. So if you if you actually just type this in, which you can, uh, and if you had attempted to save it, you would get alerted. But you could also pre-validate, and it says, hey, there's um, there's a file that already exists with that document number, so that's not going to be allowed. so let's um let me let's take a look at that little setting that i talked about a moment ago under manage uh, vault definition enable distributed file access so let's just turn that on hit okay and again that's something that you would push out to all your users using the solid edge admin um i'm going to go ahead and open up the file that I made earlier, the 8000. And so let's go take a look now. Now that I've opened that file, I've turned on that setting. Let's go look in Windows File Explorer.
<clears throat> there's now another file here uh, with a it just has the same name as um, the file I have open in solid edge but has a has a .se lock in it now notice how small it is so if you're using a file replication service like Dropbox or Box that file will sync to the server extremely fast and it's always going to be a very tiny file uh, and, and inside it there's just a little bit of information uh, about the username and the computer and it looks like there's a date really you don't need to know that but the whole point is that it's a very small file so uh, if someone else uh, tries to open that file they will also have that se lock a little token file in it because it syncs very quickly to every other person's computer so when they if they try to open this part even though they have a copy of it the system will then look to see if the se lock exists and if it does that means that someone else in in some other computer across the internet has that file open so that's very simply how that is achieved uh, and then when you close that file um, you see that the se lock actually disappears and then again that would be it would it would trigger the cloud service to delete the se lock file extremely quickly from the uh, the cloud and then propagate that down uh, to every other user uh, within just milliseconds uh, depending on I guess depending on how wide the network is, but that's the simple mechanism that they use, and it's it's uh, it's really quite quite awesome. I really, I really like it. Um, and so we'll just turn that off because we don't need it. Doesn't hurt to have it on, but it's only good if you're in a you know a replicated uh, file system. So that's it for now. We. So let's continue with our setup of the built-in data management. So I've opened my proxy.txt, which lives in your preferences holder by default. Of course, that could be put on a central server and defined through your SE admin tools so that everybody points to the same file if you're in a multi-user environment. So I've just simply added uh, within this begin define custom and define custom, I've added an entry define mfg type and, and text is the type of value it's strings it's just text and make sure you put these in exactly in the format that you see the existing ones in and then there's a begin mfg type and end mfg type so i've added as options 3d print lathe mill and default is empty so now that those are in you should be able to go to your manage and when you set custom properties and view custom properties you will see it picks that up from the prop seed and then once you rebuild the index you will be able to search on that as well as when you go ahead and make a new file and save it you'll be able to add that as a column. So when you go to columns, now you'll have that as a uh, selectable column. And you would fit, fill that in and it would give you the option to choose that from your defined um, possibilities that you put in that text file. Very cool. And then of course, when you search upon open, uh, the little search uh, dialog. You can see that I've run this once before. I've just simply picked MFG type and we'll say maybe contains 3, uh, 3D and search and it comes back very quickly um, that that little block I made early earlier has um, that in it as a custom property. And then also within Windows File Explorer, you simply go to your view 
I'll double click to pin that open and you go to columns and choose columns and you'll be able to add that there as well and to push that down into all your folders in your vault simply go to options and go to view and apply to folders so then just in windows file explorer as i drill there's my manufacturing type i have one in there for lathe and one for 3d print and that can also be leveraged here in the search and there you go now that we've finished with the setup instructions let's take a look at some of the features that were mentioned in the powerpoint so first from windows file explorer you see that we're in an, my local copy which is my vault and if i right click on an assembly i have open as which as you remember presents you with the file open dialog so you have much more control of how you open your documents you could then select a particular display configuration or open it as read only or pretty much any control that you have on your typical document versus the old um, the older way if you opened it you would get um, whatever was pre-configured in the uh, system as the default so much better control and you also have that right here uh, also in your most recently used so um, versus previously you would just click it and it would it would use the um, the last saved probably or you know whatever you have for a default uh, for an open uh, behavior so if I had to make a drawing of this I might first want to make sure that someone didn't already do it and I could open drawing uh, and that would kind of prove that there is no drawing that's been made of this assembly uh, so we'll go ahead and create a new one drawing of active model which is there's nothing new here we're just going to use a click sheet template which is very cool really fast I love quick sheets they're just a template that has views already in place um, so it's a great way to make a template that has arrangement of views uh, already in it and you can see it doesn't have a name yet it just kind of picks up uh, the template name and then when you save this is kind of similar to what we used to have but you get this nice clean uh, common dialog here where it, it inherits the drawing inherits um the revision and the uh, name of the file and if you want to validate to make sure they're you know those files don't already exist which they shouldn't of course you can add things like you know custom properties and then you can just go ahead and hit save so that just simply saves makes a new drawing um but inheriting uh the current revision and file name of the model that you placed on it uh, and with only only within just the few seconds that that file was created in the system, it's able to index it and now find it with the open drawing. So it's very cool. So the system uh, indexes incrementally as new files are added. So another great capability because of uh, the fast search is the where used. So that's this is much much nicer than working with a file system for where used because because it's so fast uh, I like my preview on so there's the drawing that we made and um, here's an assembly and maybe I'll just want to go ahead and open that next level up uh, assembly So now that the next level assembly is open, what else can we check out? We have a couple of cool uh, capabilities. Also, get latest is now available when you have the built-in data management enabled. It would it would typically be grayed out for just working directly on a file system. Uh, so get latest will go out and utilize the fast search and find if there's a newer, later 
better revision of any component within uh, this assembly. And you can see um, it did, um, if you hover with your mouse, you'll get a little tool tip. It actually says newer version B available. Uh, don't be don't be distracted by the A at the end. Uh, the rev letter is right here. This is just the way I've configured the Pathfinder to display uh, the title. So you can see that's a dash A. Uh, the tooltip proves that there's a B available. The icon changes, and you can um, you can pick the ones that you'd like to swap in if there were a use case for that. But you could probably just go ahead and select all as well. Um, and if you wanted to limit it to only you know things that are actually released, that's an option too. But you can really just follow through um, and and go ahead and replace part. Uh, and now that swaps that out with a little bit different component with a slash b revision. So super easy, no rooting around in your folder structure, uh, looking at letters uh, in files. So another, let's see, revisions, another great capability. If there were any revisions of this top level document, uh, you could just, without anything selected, you click just without any drawing, um, without any model selected, just click in the drawing window. This will find revisions of the current assembly, uh, but it's also context sensitive. So if I select on a component and then choose revisions, you can also right click and do that. Um, and I'm just like working off the data management tab. This will find um, other revisions. And again, the preview is really nice to give me confidence that I'm actually getting uh, the component uh, that I want. So currently I can verify even just by visual that that's a yellow button. And uh, maybe that's really not what we want. I think we wanna uh, replace it with this this other one that's already been released and you can just go ahead and replace that and you can see that that swaps that in very quickly if there were more than one component it will present you with a dialog to ask you if you want to do them all so for example if i did this shock and um, it would say hey do you want to replace all the shocks or just one of the shocks so just a simple little dialog with with um three three buttons on it uh, you can also check a document out which is kind of a long-term checkout once you do this and save the file it it um, you can actually close it and then if anybody else tries to open it it will tell them that they can't save it they'll have to do a save as or a revise but it will tell you tell them that you have that uh, long-term uh, checkout set and they might contact you to find out why uh, you've done that and i'll go ahead and save my assembly and um, the one-step uh, workflow, if you've gone, if you've set that up, um, you can go ahead and kick that off to get it approved. Um, just, just wanted to show you kind of where that is. That might be a discussion for another day, but not too difficult uh, to use. Uh, and then maybe last is the pack and go from the application button. Uh, we have um, on the community tab, uh, we have um, pack and go. Give that a second. You can see it's processing the components in the status bar. And this is a way that you can gather up these files and possibly send them to someone outside the company. Um, nice addition to add drawings, may want to copy to a single folder. We can do that because we have um, unique file names and I'll just go ahead and browse out and maybe make a new, a new folder call it uh, five six one go ahead and hit OK and then save and you can see down in the status bar that it's 
it's um, copying those out, making sure that the links are all good. And now it's going to uh, just open the folder so I can kind of verify as one last step. And there's all our thumbnails. So there you go, a little walkthrough of Solid Edge uh, built-in data management. Okay. So we'll check the. Uh, we have some. We have a poll, and uh, we'll check the chat for. Uh, I'll wait some questions. Possibly, I don't see any questions. Uh, let's run the poll. I think these actually were in a little bit different order than we originally intended, but it's all a good poll. What do we got? Uh, so we got 29. I'll show these uh, results. After I'll give it a minute, a few more seconds. All right. And we'll close it and share it. Okay. So hopefully you're seeing the results there. It may be interesting. And one more. And we'll launch this, uh, the Solid Edge Technical Publications look interesting. And uh, I would think this would be yeses all the way across the board. That's really <laughs> cool software. And, uh, and hey, thanks everyone too for um, for hanging in there and attending. There's a, a lot of information in here and uh, some really good reference info to come back to if you want to rewatch any of these or some uh, more background what do you have for responses oh, 100 percent yes on that all right so it looks good um, all right and don't actually so, see any questions any questions oh hold on maybe they're scrolled uh, here we go can you read it how is SE in calculating a percent in compare search for similar part? Oh, uh, by, similar. by volume and shape. Yeah. Oh, I don't have. Um, in shapes, or I mean, because in stock solid edge, there is a compare model. You mesh your solid model, you can compare it against a uh, a scan model. Yeah, yeah. I don't know for I, two separate bodies. The question might be, you know, how how is it doing it? Uh, how is it calculating the percentage compared? Actually, we probably don't know that. No, <laughs> top secret. Somebody Maybe. probably does, but uh, right, right. Just through use and building confidence in the system. Um, did I miss any more questions? Okay. Right. Yeah, hold on here. This isn't. Uh, All right. Can't That's something see. we can look. Yeah, into. I need to expand my. Here. All right. Um, so hang on. Other questions. Um, can't nope. seem to get this expanded, Rick. Okay. Um, get some more questions here. Oh, sound quality is bad. That was just a comment. Or maybe now the sound is good. Uh, so that's it. Uh, All right. So pretty good. Uh, some other. So I guess that's it. We'll uh, wrap it up. And we did the poll, so thank you very much for attending today. And uh, feel free to email us uh, any questions directly or suggestions for future topics, and uh, we can take it from there. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Make sure they're not in the questions.